Hey ihr Lieben, it's Yesh here, yeshuabarton.com. Today we're answering the question, can a Christian have a demon? This video is part of a whole teaching series about deliverance ministry in the Bible. You can look it up up here. And today we want to start off with Acts chapter 5. Now the things that I'm going to teach you, partly I just learned recently and partly I kind of developed in the last years going through deliverance and being a Christian. So let's start with Acts chapter 5 verse 3 really and this is the situation where Sapphira and Ananias basically lie to the Holy Spirit. But notice what Peter says to Ananias. Acts chapter 5 verse 3 but Peter said Ananias why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the peace of the land for yourself. Now Ananias is a Holy Spirit filled, completely saved Christian, part of a church around the apostles, being a Christian, right? And Peter says, Satan has filled your heart to lie against the Holy Spirit. Now we know that lying is a spirit which you can see in the Old Testament where that one spirit comes before God and says I want to be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. However here we can see that this lying spirit or Satan fills heart of a Christian. And please notice here that I'm giving you mostly New Testament scriptures that prove that a Christian actually can have a demon. So Let's go into 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, where Paul is writing, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from, from the faith, so some people, some Christians, will come away from faith. Holy Spirit-filled, full-blown, saved Christians will fall away from faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. My main point is verse 1 here, but however, yes, it doesn't say they will be filled, but they give heed to the doctrines of spirits and deceiving spirits and the doctrines of demons. These Christians or former Christians have at least allowed these doctrines and these deceiving spirits into their life. Yes, okay, it doesn't say they are filled by these spirits. But as we see in Acts chapter 5, that Christians can be filled with a satanic demonic thing, right? So for the next one, the next argument that I want to bring, I want you to check yourself. I'm going to first ask you, do you know anyone who is selfish. Now I'm going to show you that this is truly demonic and that Christians do have those demons in their life. Read this, James 3 verses 13 to 16. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, where? In your hearts, inside, not out here on the shoulder, not in the flesh, in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic, not the flesh, earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. So if there is, we read here, if there's envy and self-seeking, actually it says bitter envy, and I would include, because it says bitter here, you, I guess you can say bitterness too, I don't know. But anyways, envy and self-seeking, you know that there's confusion as well, and every other evil thing. So if you have evil things in your life, it says right here, it's demonic. If those things are in your life, you have a demon. If you have never been prayed for, and this demon has never been cast out, you have never broken this, these curses, you are in bondage, you are demonized, you need deliverance. Now this might sound very harsh, but I mean this in all love, okay? Having a demon is not a sin per se. Leaving the demon and not taking care of that, that's a different story. It's something that Jesus died for and rose again for, defeated death for, so that you and I can be free and 100% free, okay? If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us, right? And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. These things are unrighteous to the core. You can be delivered. 
Now, I know they're Christians and I had several conversations like that before. Yeah, but how can a demon actually stand the glory of God? Nothing can stand in the presence of God. And I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues. How can that be? Well, I you know, just showed you in Acts 5 that it can be. But also, if you look in Ezekiel 8, you can see a description of the temple where the Holy Spirit or the presence of God, the glory of God is there while demon worship is going on in all these little areas and all these little chambers that are hidden. And obviously the point that God is making in Ezekiel 8 is saying because this is going on, because they're wanting this, because they're not worshiping me anymore, but all these creatures and demonic things, I am leaving now. Those demonic things and the presence of God can be in the temple of God. Now, what is the temple of God? What is the temple of the Holy Spirit? We are, you are, okay? Now, you can also, again, look in the Old Testament and look at that lying spirit. That spirit came up in front of God, in the council of God, and said, I want to be a lying spirit. That is not Satan, that is not an angel, it's a spirit that said, I want to be a lying spirit. So there you are. Can a demon be in the presence of God? Yes. We see several times that Satan is in the council of God. In Job, we can see this. We can see this in the book of Revelation, where Satan, the accuser, is accusing the saints day and night. But obviously, we have overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the power of our testimony. Now, to explain this, how this works, I really encourage you to look at Ezekiel 8 and read the whole chapter. See, being demonized does not mean that you're demon-possessed. When you gave your life to Christ, your spirit became alive and your spirit was possessed by God. When you're filled by the Holy Spirit, your spirit is filled by the Holy Spirit. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. But then there are also areas like the soul, the heart, the mind, etc. that can be occupied, demonized by demon, right? It's like a mayor in a city that basically controls the city. Even though he controls the city, there can be little houses or, or areas in the city that can be controlled by squatters or by gangs or whatnot, you know? So the whole city is controlled by the mayor, but there are areas that, let's say, that are occupied. Israel had the same situation. They owned the whole land, but they had to fight and get the giants out of the land. They had to, to conquer it little by little. Even later on, even in David's times, they had to conquer it little by little. The same with us. We can be owned by God, we're possessed by God, but there can be areas in our life that are demonized that you're not demon possessed but maybe areas in your life are demon controlled that's why as christians we need to be delivered by these demons and sanctify ourselves so that we become vessels of honor for the master's use this is what this is all about okay this whole deliverance thing it's not about to shame or guilt anyone it's about receiving real breakthrough and real deliverance and real healing so that we become more useful to be able to build the kingdom. If you need deliverance and a real touch of God and you just feel like something is pulling you down and you feel like there's some demonic activity in your life, you can check out this video over here. And maybe you're not quite sure about healing deliverance ministry. Well, you can check out this playlist where I'm going a little bit more in depth into some of these points. Until then, I'm going to see you in the next video and always remember, keep your eyes on the prize.